Welcome to Calming Heart, the sounds of David's Psalms. I'm glad you've joined us for this brief moment we share together. I will be playing some of the music that has been brought out of the Psalms. My name is Steve Reese. I play the harp. And over the last several years, I've been bringing the sounds of David's Psalms into recordings. You can find a lot of my music on my website, www.calmingharp.com. I have CDs available and MP3s. And you can go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube and then type in Peregrinati, P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-N-A-T-T-I, you will find hours of beautiful harp music that you can just play in the background and be calmed with the music that David may have played for his sheep at one time or another. So as we share this half hour, join me and enjoy the sounds of David's harp. Once again, um, this is another Shabbat that we find ourselves in the state of Washington with our older son and his family, and um, even our grandson, our oldest grandson, who just came in yesterday. Um, he's been over at university, and he's just getting ready to join the Air Force is in the search and rescue division, and uh, we're proud of him. And uh, he made that decision all by himself, and we just want to support him in it. And the subject that I've been impressed with this week has been the subject of spring. <laughs> new beginnings, new, new, the word new. I went into the Psalms in the search, and I put in the word new, and it, it was interesting. The word came up. Uh, and it, the word there is in reference to sing a new song. And um, so as I was looking through the Psalms, I found Psalm 96 and Psalm 98 both speak about the new song. And up here, actually all the way coming up California along the coast and on up into through Oregon and into Washington, we kept seeing many of the signs of the trees, the red bud especially, just blooming profusely. And um, the almonds were just finishing blooming in California. And uh, the orange blossoms were just starting to put a scent out. And the daffodils planted along the highway and um, many of the bulbs, tulips, all those coming out. And I always love this time of year. I went for a walk with my dad um, down in California. He has what he calls his Sabbath trail. And we walked along that and there were new wildflowers beginning to bloom there as well. And so uh, we saw a red trillium uh, coming out and um, others. And it just reminded me of our Heavenly Father has been so amazing in his creation that he, on an annual, on a yearly basis, we come around, we, 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 we start out with this spring and the, everything's coming to life. I'm looking out the window here and there's brand new, really vibrant green leaves just shooting out of some of the trees here. And so life is beginning to show itself once again. And then we go into the fruitful summer and 
and the fall of har harvest of fall, and then we go into the the snows of winter. And uh, interestingly enough, Shirley and I <coughs> will be heading into Montana next week, and we find out it's still snowing over there. So we hadn't brought very warm clothes with us, so we went to a Goodwill and bought some extra warm clothes so we could uh, be in Montana because it's still winter there. But I'm sure once we're there, we're going to see begin to see these early signs of spring springing forth, life springing forth. And our Heavenly Father created this cycle. Interestingly enough, his feasts um, mirror these cycles. And even the plan of salvation, Jesus comes, Yeshua comes, and the feast that he fulfills, Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread and Shavuot, all of these occur in the springtime. And then my belief is that when he comes for his second return, he will be expressing the fall feast. He'll, there'll be the blowing of the trumpet. There'll be the the day of J Yom Kippur, the covering. And finally, the, the uh, Sukkot, or God with us, dwelling with us, dwelling in Sukkot but God with us. And um, so all of these things mirror um, the this, this cycle of life, the cycle of the seasons, the cycle of redemption, all of those things. Even Psalm 23, he says, he, he, put, he leads us on paths of righteousness. And that word paths actually is, is, can be interpreted cycles of righteousness. And so our Heavenly Father, that is... He takes us through this cycle year by year by year. Instead of being linear and heading on out into, eter into this eternal point at which we're headed towards, he brings us around each year. And we get to do it again. And it's so, it's so exemplary of our salvation. Even when we sin we, or, or step off the track, <laughs> or get into trouble, he says, oh, well, that's fine. We can come around again. Just turn around, come back. And so instead of making things linear to where if you fail, that's it, he makes it cyclical so that if we fail, we can come around again. And that's just the mercy and love of our Heavenly Father. That's, and he, he does it through his seasons that he's set up on, um, among us. He does it through his cycles of righteousness, his feast. All of these things are continually reminding us that he's not done with us, <laughs> that redemption is still possible. All we have to do is repent, is to, sh as I studied the word uh, several weeks ago, to shuv, to make that 180 degree turn back, to enter that cycle once again and come back around. That's what our Heavenly Father has done for us. And so today we're going to take a look at Psalm 96 and Psalm 98. Both of these I've recorded in the album um, Living Water. And uh, surely you'll read with each of the Psalms and uh, we'll have more comments. So let's listen to Psalm 96. <laughs> Oh, sing to Yahweh a new song. Sing to Yahweh all the earth. Sing to Yahweh. 
Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is Yahweh and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but Yahweh made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to Yahweh, O families of the peoples, Ascribe to Yahweh glory and strength. Ascribe to Yahweh the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship Yahweh in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, Yahweh reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before Yahweh, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness.
So that is Psalm 96. And um, I find it interesting. First of all, the word for new that's used there in Hebrew is chadash. And um, it has the meaning in the, by the concordance of fresh or new thing. So fresh is uh, kind of the interesting application of what we're talking about. And our Heavenly Father continues to give us fresh opportunities, brings us around to fresh, freshen the cycle and start again. He lets us do that. That's amazing. It's interesting, uh, both Psalm 96 and 98 talk about the ocean roaring and um, that being as a sign or a, a, a manifestation of the rejoicing of the sea. And um, we were in Mendocino, California last week, and I talked a little bit about that, but it was fantastic to me. It's always fantastic to me to stand at the shore and look at these huge combers coming in and the wave crashes on the rock and it, the spray goes up 30, 40, 50 feet in the air, depending on the force of the wave. And um, it just, the, the power of all of that is just amazing to me. And it, it's such a, you know, and you think about how many times a day those waves crash on those rocks and how many days a year and how many years they've been doing that you know one of the places in scripture says that god has set the boundary for the sea and it cannot cross and there's those waves just pounding 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 all of that energy pounding away and the rock stands and it's so amazing how many times david refers to our Heavenly Father as his rock, the rock of salvation. And when you think of that constant energy coming against that rock and yet it stands, it does not move, that, that is our Heavenly Father. That is, that is his, um, his strength and his durability and the fact that he does not change no matter what comes at him or us, he does not change. In fact, one several places in scripture, he says, I am not like a man that I change. If I said it, then it is done. You can count on it. You can take it to the bank. It is done and it will not change. My, his covenant with us does not change. His dealing with us as his children does not change. He is not capricious that one day he wakes up and says, I don't feel like this. But he stays steady. He stays at the course. He stays the course. He is the rock. And the waves can pound and pound and pound. But amazingly, the, the idea is that they're rejoicing. <laughs> so... So let's take a listen to Psalm 98, and then I'll come back with some final comments. Sing to Yahweh a new song, for he has done marvelous things. 
His right hand and His holy arm have worked salvation for Him. Yahweh has made known His salvation. He has revealed His righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our Elohim. Make a joyful noise to Yahweh all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to Yahweh with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, Yahweh. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before Yahweh, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. That is Psalm 98, and um, looking at the Hebrew letters in that word chadash, and it's the chet, which means life, and the dalit, which means the door, and then the shen, which means strength, it can mean destruction as well, but it, I think in this case it, it means strength. It's the picture of teeth, and so you could say that chadash, chadash is these, the life at the door strong, <laughs> which is a very interesting way of looking at new uh, life coming in the door, strongly coming in the door. And that's really what we see in this spring picture that we've been talking about. And so I also found interesting that um, David, in both of these Psalms, he talks about the rivers um, singing and clapping their hands, the trees singing, the creation, the, the hills rejoicing, all of these things he's talking about. Creation is engaging in this praising of our Heavenly Father. And, and I just, you know, when you s sit by a river and you hear the water gurgling, that, that is music, that is singing. That it, and it, when you hear it goes over the waterfall, that is like clapping hands. And I did a, a article in Masters of Health magazine quite a while back about 
even the trees, when the wind blows through the leaves and the needles of the pines, you get this whispering. I've been on roads that are named Whispering Pines. And um, there's this, this beautiful music that's coming out, these frequencies that are coming off of these trees. And there was a study that shows that when we listen to those, there's actually these cells in our nose that are stimulated to produce um, nitric oxide that, that reduces our blood pressure. <laughs> and so our Heavenly Father, even in the, in the trees, in the forests, and He has healing for us. And so I just, um, I'm just so amazed that as we look at creation, we see that our Heavenly Father has allowed, has made creation so that it, it, it enters into this celebration of life, this celebration of not just beginning of life, but of recreation of life or coming back around in life. So that our Heavenly Father is showing us constantly day by day that He has made provision, for, He made us and He sustains us and he provides for us. And he, as I saw in Psalm 51, we did several weeks ago, he recreates us to be able to have this clean heart, this new heart, once again, to be able to celebrate the life he's given us and the life that he's bringing us toward eternal life with our Heavenly Father. What a, what a promise. What a day. So be blessed in your week. Shalom. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Stay tuned, as I say. A little pun. I have many more songs to share with you. I have more to share about how this all comes together. And I pray that you will share and help people, especially those you see stressed, especially in these times that we're going through. Bring people to this calming and this peace and this rest that this beautiful music of the Psalms of David brings to each of our lives. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you next week. Many, many blessings to you all today.